Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Raf from Technica Antica. Um, today's video, Lamperti and Melocchi. Right, before we go um, on to analyzing the figure of Giovanni Battista Lamperti, his father, Francesco Lamperti, and what is, um, I don't know, uh, written down or shown, described in, in this very book, I must say, that um, this book is not written by Lamperti, it's written by uh, William Errol Brown, uh, first edition in 1931, and uh, actually this is the second edition, written in 1957 by Lillian Strongen. Thus, um, I do not know the veracity of what is contained in this book. Um, I know that uh, Giovanni Battista Lamperti uh, wrote three books. He had three publications. Actually, his father had more than that. We'll get there in a minute. Um, so, basically, um, I'm trying to find the works by Lamperti and the years. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. So, The Techniques of Bel Canto was written and thus published i believe in 1905 and then we have this vocal vocal wisdom uh, that is transcribed by uh, william Earl brown in 1931 and you know a uh, second edition in 1957. why do i say this because uh we're gonna find data in this book that might mm, contradict that of what we thought about lamperti before again, I go deep into the book. I'm just going to read a few of the notes that I've, I've, I've um, taken and I've gathered in order to do this video. Uh, once again, we gotta go to the teacher's teacher, or what is supposed or acclaimed, what is uh, advocated, what uh, uh, we think they said, because there is n there are no so there are not so many registers. Um, Francesco Lamperti, who is the father, was born in 1813, died in 1892. Giovanni Battista Lamperti was born in 1939, died in 1910. And Giovanni Battista Lamperti, who is basically the, the, the one that became the famous teacher, it's a bit like Garcia, see? Vicente del Popolo, Garcia, and then... Um, uh, his son, Garcia Jr., Manuel Garcia, um, mm, he, he, the, the, the son basically becomes the teacher, whilst the father is basically the singer. It's the same thing. Uh, so Giovanni, Giovanni Battista um, claims that his father studied under the castrato and teacher Antonio Maria Bernacchi, 1685, 1756 and he was uh, both rival and teacher sporadically of Farinelli um, he created uh, six roles uh, with, with along with Handel so six Handel uh, roles and those of Hasse Leonardo Vinci and I believe Scarlatti uh, can't understand my my, my handwriting Oh yeah, so it's a bit darker than what we have in Garcia, that everything is straight to the, to the point there and, and it's quite faithful. Uh, unless the, tr the, the translation made a, some sort of a typo. Okay, so we have a preface to the enlarged edition, uh, written by Lillian Strangin. I'm not gonna go there. It says, when my late teacher William R. Brown died in 1945, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, it says that... Um, uh, he had the record of Lamperti's lessons in Dresden, Germany, uh, between 1981, 18, sorry, 1891 and 1893. Uh, okay, so it, again, this is like the notes of, a, of, of somebody that taught this particular um, lady, and um, that, that those words came from Lamperti. It's a bit like the Bible, right? Written many hundreds of years after the death of Christ. I'm not going to go there, but yeah. Um, okay, in the, during the introduction, all, every single uh, every single 
master or every single like big name teacher claims that there is a decline in in the vocal arts and uh, Lamperti was saying this in 1910 I mean uh, before that I suppose but uh, he goes on with preventing the decadence of the art of singing and he, he starts talking how everything has gone down since everybody wants to sing Verdi and Wagner uh, and here we are like more than a hundred years later uh, trying to figure out ourselves so I'm not gonna go in depth um, about this nagging about you know what was going on back then but basically Lamperti was um, already criticizing people singing way too heavily uh, trying to sing Tannhäuser and Aida when they should only sing Rossini, Bellini and Donizetti um, and I just I just found a very interesting um, note here and this is the only one the, the only thing I want to share with you in this in this particular chapter uh, yeah 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 it's about a student of his that actually sang the first Cavalleria Rusticana okay here we go so I remember having heard a tenor named Pardini in Italy who at 72 years of age sang Otello uh, the Otello of Rossini he still had the fresh voice of a young man the tenor Stagno I mean, uh, this is funny who I permitted to make his debut in 1860 at Genoa has been um, singing the last 32 years Cavalleria Rusticana was written for him he has sang the whole repertory of Wagner, Meyerbeer, uh, Verdi, uh, and, and all the rest. Is it all? Uh, yet he still maintains his fresh voice, as do others such as Negri, Compagni, and Tomagno, not Tamagno. All right. So uh, again, it's a bit of like self-loathing about his students and and his um, methodology and his ego, basically. All right, big ego. ¿Por qué no me había dicho esto antes? Venga, venga conmigo. Suba. ¡Qué voz más maravillosa! Pase. Entre. Creo que lo hemos conseguido, Luisa. Nunca he visto tan entusiasmado al maestro. Vamos. Cante ahora como lo hizo antes. El Edichea. El Edichea. El Edichea. privilegiada, llena de musicalidad. Oh. Claro, claro que me ocuparé de él. Yo le daré ese estilo, ese matiz, ese toque All que right, solo... So now let's go deep into um, the, the pages that I have written down here where I found the, the most important, um, I don't know, quotations, if you may. All right, so let's go already to page 48. And... Uh, I'm sure there is, uh, oh, in page 45, for example, he claims that um, the glottis must remain, must remain unviolate. So it, it has to find that balance uh, of, of air pressure against the vocal folds and thus this mechanism, this laryngeal mechanism, and it is uh, very unique for each, for each person. Delicate, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that word because fragility, delicacy, that tends to freak people out okay so now we go to the actual notes um, 
focus of tone is purely a sensation, not an effort. Once again, it is a sensation of leaning against something. So we take a, a middle C. La, la, la. And pressing gently against the folds. Then we go to the top. <laughs> and that's your A flat there. And there is not actual massive effort to go there. It's actually quite free. Some of my students had realized that this is very weak, which makes me very happy. So <laughs> that's your B flat. Okay, I'm gonna stop singing because people are gonna start making fun of me out of the window. Um, so efforts annul the unconscious activity of singing. Now this um, sort of starts to get a bit confusing with that theory, you know, that doctor in New York that, that founded the non-effort school of singing. Uh, singing is an athletic act. But obviously, we need to optimize the functions in order to find the balance. Uh, your, but this is for me very important. Your voice begins first. Dove nasce la voce? In gola. Your breath comes next. Your energy enters last. Well, for me, this is it's not a dogma. Obviously, I don't believe in dogmas, but this is actually the whole sums up the whole school of um, Italian traditional singing. Why? Because everything originates at a laryngeal level. The breath makes everything move. And then that energy, in order to make that tone um, a, a stronger or potent, comes last. So first is the setting. Okay. Um, for me, that's very important. Uh, and here, I, I also highlighted something that might cause a bit of surprise or uh, controversy. The carrying power of the voice is equal to the inherent energy of your compressed breath. And where do you compress the breath? In the larynx. Why do I say this? Because every time you, nowadays, you talk about carrying, uh, immediately goes like projection, immediately mask and eh! And uh, I, don't, I do not think Lamperti was talking about that. Okay. Um, rivalry between Garcia and Lamperti. All voices using the stroke of the glottis deteriorate rapidly. Hater, alright? <laughs> we were already a uh, hater. And then he goes like, um, okay. The, the reference and the metaphor of the bow, the bow of a violin and the string, you know, how it touches lightly and the voice is created. Um, okay, uh, page 53, I believe I marked that one. No, I went straight to 63 and I'm finding things I wrote I don't know when. Return to close quality, it's impossible if the tone, if the tone becomes too wide. So basically, I say basically a lot, right? Sorry. Um, he talks about aperto and coperto, open and closed. Voce aperta, voce chiusa. If you think chiusa as in closed and narrow, you, my humble point of view, you're wrong. It is uh, not spread. Remember that uh, we used to say, Garcia claimed that if you open your, you over open your mouth, especially horizontally, the sound is going to spread and it's going to be squeaky. Well, here you have Lamperti says almost the same in a, in, in a different order. If your voice becomes too hoody, too chiusa, ooh, there is no way of going back to the chiaro. So first you need to set your chiaro strong, McRae speaking, and then incorporate the scudo because otherwise you will never be able to go back to the chiaro, to the open, uh, and, and the voice will spread. So. The resonance, the primary resonance is the pharynx opens wide in the uh, open um, redundance, open sound, and then you apply the oscuro on top of it to create what we call the cover, il giro, and then you go to the to the top of your voice. All right. In order to make this video um, shorter, I'm going to jump straight into page 
uh, 63 because there are many many notes here and I don't want to go to uh, on page 51 we start talking about the chiaroscuro and elastic solid filling head throat and in low tones chest uh, I'm not gonna go there um, Caruso claimed that all his bones resonated and stuff but that was something that um, uh, that this doctor, I think Mirafiotti wrote, I don't know what Caruso said. The dark light tone, chiaroscuro, that's what makes everything homogeneous and, and balanced. Um, important note here, singing loudly is releasing, releasing, release of air. If you start thinking, oh, I gotta hit that top note, well, uh, you know, um, persignate yourself, uh, okay? You, you have to do the sign of the cross. To hit is a violent um, action and a violent thought. If you think about attack, it's gonna be the same. If you think about leaning against it and you all of a sudden you have a, a note from scratch, for example, a B flat. Uh, why should you blast it or, you know, attack it from underneath. This is exactly what, what he's saying. There is the chiaro, open pharynx, then the scudo, and the voice leans against that. All right. Um, the singing voice is born of the clash of opposing principle. The tension of conflicting forces brought to an equilibrium. Larynx, vocal folds. Apoggio. My point of view, yes, okay. Ah, here we go. Scaping breath will turn to tone only when the inner energy in the compressed air feeds the pulsations in the throat. You zip up your folds and phonation is done. If you can't uh, activate that arytenoid, arytenoid system, well, you're in trouble. Compressed air through coordination, uh, through coordination, open, open as in talking. So, what did uh, Melocchi say? Mm, parlato rinforzato, in words of uh, Pari de Venturi. Okay. And, ha, ha There is no attack. No mouth position, no tongue position. Neutral. I, I analyzed that on, um, in depth in, in, a, in a previous uh, video. Here we go. Mm, the focus of the voice is felt in the head, though caused in the throat. So the origin of the voice, the support of the voice is laryngeal, and of course it's reproduced later on in the cavities of the cranium, and eventually may, you know, if you will, on the uh, frontal cavities. <laughs> mm, mm, I like this. Um, it must it must start like a needle puncture. What do I say to my students, especially when they 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 go higher? The sound that the sound is deeper and thinner. McRae always said this: deeper and thinner. Well, that analogy with the needle, I think, is brutal. Um, if you do not do that, then you smack, you know, the vocal folds and. Uh, well, it says here, the, either uh, relaxation or rigidity will destroy the focusing power of the glottis. Uh, it's like, a bit like the world of Lord of the Rings. You shall not pass! If pronouncing words closes the throat, blame it on the breath. Again, you, you should aim to keep notes alive and not straight notes at least uh, in, in the lyrical repertoire. The minute you start producing straight notes without vibration, and yet again, vibrato, uh, the way I see it, and not only me, is a natural um, uh, process that occurs when the voice is free. So don't go there pulsating, you know, three pulses of vibrato, ah, 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 because you're gonna, you're gonna end nowhere. Uh, that release sensation, especially uh, at the top, it is fundamental. And when you perform glottal strokes, it's actually a release, as I say, touch and go. Yeah. Uh, 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 
release, touch and go. And that's how you sustain tone. All right, let's continue. Um, sinuses. <laughs> the very sinuses in head and cheekbones, right? forward resonances, uh, shed or gather vibration if the initial tone is intense enough, pulsa pulsation of the glottis, is intense enough to start uh, them echoing. And here we go. Page 73 of Vocal Wisdom. You cannot blow your voice into these cavities, nor pull your tone from there. Again, if you hang or you drive into this without you know, prior um, setup in the laryngeal uh, mechanism, you're doomed. And I don't say this, apparently Lamperti said it to this, this bloke, this um, William Errol Brown. <laughs> voice placing and, uh, and this is one of the things that I, be, I believe to be controversial place the voice is one that is felt in the mask of the face as well as in high in the head I don't know I don't know if you're talking about resonances I do agree if you're talking about function I do not agree I do not agree at all yeah marked it that one the controversy mm, yeah and yet again he contradicts himself here the term voice placing is a misnomer voice finding is a more appropriate appropriate expression why because the minute you place something that something cannot move and when when people refer us to voice placing immediately um, at least me I have heard that term for so long and it just um, advocates for that forward resonance as the origin of the sound forgetting anything that that it is placed underneath i am not completely sure about that um, the sensations of resonance and echoing in cavities of head mouth and chest are the only evidences of proper and efficient vibration in the throat and adequate control of breath energy well again you can interpret these passages you know, as you will, but vibration in the throat means pharynx, and then head, and well, the chest, what can I say? Are you going to put your hand here and say, Russian, it's in my chest? I don't know. Okay. All right. 74, 75. I'm not going to talk about the mask here. I don't know if that, that brown misinterpret Lamperti, but I, I don't buy it. So we're going already to page 99, 100. High tones expand as to resonance, but do not spread as to vibration. Spread. Ah! 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 There you go. Fano, uh, fano, fano il giro e fano il vomiti. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. High and low tones are then equally easy. It should be. I never did whilst I was in career, but it should be for sure. All right, page 100. Important. Never pull the voice away from its focus, nor push the breath up from its foundation. Well, mm, what is the focus of the voice? McCray always said it. Problem nowadays is students are being told to get away from their voices and it is my job in his words to get them back to their voices well then this passage um, makes sense your voice is, is pneumatic i agree i think um Lauri Volpe used to say uh, something like that um okay let's go to page 105 yeah i'm gonna skip the voice has one register but three resonances one registered chest 
Cachini, chest. Zacconi, chest. Um, Garcia, yeah. You talked about chest, falsetto, and head voice as resonances, really not registers, in which you must do something totally different. No. Don't hum. Woohoo. Okay. Mm. Coordination, feeling elastic. Ah, it's a bit of a jewel, although I don't know the, how faithful this is. Supplement. Lamperti notebook and selected essays from the William uh, Earl Brown manuscripts. Who does this belong to? We don't know. But here we have Lamperti notebook, page 130. In singing a phrase or a long sustained tone, one feels the force of the, of the expiration descending little by little from the throat to the lowest extremity of the abdomen. I'm not going to go into diaphragms, but once this mechanism is set, it gets coordination happens with what, what it is underneath that pneumatic um, piston, and not vice versa. And the higher we go, the deeper we go. Uh, many, many, many teachers. Oh, the higher you go, the lower you gotta think. Well, how? Okay, deeper, up to a point. Don't jump your 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 um your throat down. It's not gonna work. Um, I take a voice, I make it stronger and more pleasant, but if one hasn't uh, a chest tone naturally, I cannot induce it. A, dr a dramatic soprano must have a chest tone. Haha, <laughs> we love this. We love it. All right, uh, 130, 133, right? No, 132. Okay, many people who speak with a, na with a nasal tone also sing nasally, French. There you go. When, when I, I made that video on the history of the different schools of singing, I started talking. Who has studied in Paris? Who has studied in France? Well, here we go. Lamperti is saying that um, the French, because their language demands it, they're nasal by nature. Many Americans and many Englishmen also speak nasally. The Italians never. Mm. They speak with an open throat. Do the singers in Dresden sing so covered and so dark? Well, you gotta ask yourself. German is quite a, a dark uh, language. Um, Slavics, you know, it's, it's Slavs, sorry. It's the Slavics languages. The uh, Svidania. It's quite back. Amazing voices. Um, all right, so 134. Finally, the voice controls the breath, not the reverse. All said. The voice controls the breath and not reverse. Um, yeah, I found this very curious. McRae told me, and I believe I found it somewhere, that when Rossini was asked was what, what somebody needed to sing, uh, Rossini would answer voce, voce, voce. So voice, voice, and voice. Lamperti says here, to sing, it is necessary to have a voice, a voice, and a voice. I suppose, quoting Rossini. But to sing well, it is necessary to have a musical nature, to be musically intelligent. I must say, this book is full of this philosophical, metaphysical uh, quotes about singing, that you have to invest in fine arts and you have to cultivate yourself, which I advocate, but mm, sometimes you got to be a bit more pragmatical. Um, in singing exercises, always, always use la. This struck me first time I, I, I saw it after studying with McRae. Then all the defects and faults will be evident. If one sings with the words on dark vowels, the faults are not revealed. The, the syllable la serves like a doctor's examination of a body to find the cause of a malady. With McRae, la wa, la. It was all the time that la, la, all right? 
when we work with the U and especially the deep U. La, la, la. Okay, so that L and R that then becomes O and U, they are they are present. Um, tone, okay, the tone is nasal because the breath is weak. Well, I believe that the tone is nasal because the, the soft palate collapses and you try to hang the, something um, onto a place that you believe it to, to make it robust and carry. Sometimes it's not the, the game. It is a mistake to sing too white, by all means. However, it is just as bad to sing too dark as too white. Bingo and dingo, uh, spot on. If you get too hoodie, you're gonna run out of runway. If you cover too early tenors, you know, on an on an E or, or E flat, wow, you're doomed. Unless you're a very very dramatic tenor, it's some sort of Giacomini. <laughs> Oh, God help you. Okay. Um, and then he goes, you know, uh, William M. Earl Brown manuscripts. Uh, okay. Well, let's visit this very briefly. Uh, he talks about the multicolored voice, the chiaroscuro. Um, tone that reverberates directly against the teeth is too white to open. Well, all those people that advocate towards the mask, they are going to tell you front teeth hard palette and uh, up front and forget about the rest mm, that's uh, that's about it yeah done so this is my video on lamperti as i say it is maybe incomplete because i have left quite a few notes uh, without discussing but uh, i believe that the main issue is that i only do have this work and i don't know if the other one is available i'll double check i've had this book forever but never really got much interest into it, except for now, uh, teaching, okay? Well, there you go. Um, Garcia, in other words, same principles. Laryngeal mechanism, pharynx, chiaroscuro, vocal folds, as the origin of the voice. Well, you draw your own conclusions, okay? Uh, as always, I say, um, um, if you like the video, like and subscribe. If you didn't like it or you didn't find it helpful, don't watch it. And if you need any help, you know where to find me. Have a great evening. Bye.